Hello, my name is Jahan Hatzelwanta. I am from Mittenwald, Germany, and I am famous for making the violins, zithers, guitars back in the 1870s. I am making the guitars like Stolfe and C.F. Martin. Very famous guys. Okay, sorry for the bad accent. My name is really Doug, and today we have a very interesting guitar to restore. It's about 150 years old and has a long list of issues. I think if I were 150 years old, I'd be falling apart too. It blows my mind that this tuner mechanism was hand machined and hand engraved, although it shouldn't surprise me. After all, Mittenwald, Germany was, and still is, a mecca of sorts of all kinds of violins, zither, guitar makers, woodworkers, and other craftsmen and artists. The bridge is missing, so I'll have to make a new one based on the footprint. There are many top cracks. The very narrow neck has a very thin and cracked, brittle fingerboard. One of the solid pearl tuner knobs is also missing. Believe it or not, this guitar was salvaged from a dumpster. Apparently, a soldier brought it to America for after World War II from Germany. The soldier played it so much that his wife smashed it and threw it into the trash. It was saved from the landfill, but remained in disrepair for many years until the present owner inherited it. The neck block is loose from the shoulders, and the neck doesn't line up with the bridge pin holes. I briefly considered modifying a Martin bridge, but that wouldn't work. What the original bridge actually looked like, we'll never know. <sighs> yep, you gotta do what you gotta do. But I photocopied the face of the guitar so I could trace around the footprint and make a new one from scratch. <laughs> Just grabbed a bunch of circular things and started uh, tracing it uh, using various things like caps, lids, cans, uh, whatever I could find that approximated the, the dimensions. And that's what I came up with. Yeah. So there you go.
So, I'm going to put a little double stick tape on here. And I'm actually going to leave a little I'm going to leave a little tail on there so I have something to grab so I can remove the tape later on to where they need to be Okay. To modify things if you need to. Hey. Wrong one for magnets. It is a very small sound hole, so. <clears throat> Ugh, it likes. You guys are very persistent. Flip. Okay, I got my magnets all lined up for this section here. Little double stick tape, little tail, so I have something to grab onto when it's dry. And it's time to reorder. going through glue like crazy way back there click Did I mention that the back was detached from the sides? Well, we've got to fix that too. Well, I got a scrappy looking scrap, but it's got good, uh, it's got good grain. Uh.
I put a shim under the bridge before scoring the finish so I can tow in the tip of my razor when I score the finish. Now there's a uh, little gap there that goes into the, uh, the dovetail joint. There's actually a, a heel cap that goes here. Um, that's going to change. I need to change the angle here. Um, you know, one would think that the fingerboard would be glued to the top face. As you can see, you can see... Uh, light uh, through there. You can also see part of the dovetail uh, there. Um, but that's the way it was uh, made originally. Um, that can probably go down a very little bit, but not yeah. not much. <laughs> see that little shadow there? Uh, it's only like a 30 second. Um, so <clears throat> the joint here is going to start bumping into the uh, the back of the, the neck block here. So we're going to need to pay attention to that. Other thing we can do to reduce the amount we need to remove from the joint is to lower the height of, of the bridge. I did leave, you know, extra here. So I could conceivably bring this down a little bit. Uh, and reshape uh, the top of there. It was probably a fairly um, 
uh, dainty to begin with, being the style of guitar it is. So, uh, between those three things, uh, we can get the neck angle to where we want it. This little rig, I've had it for years. <laughs> the felt's wearing out, but it's still good, still works. Okay, we know we have braces along all these cracks here. <clears throat> we re glued the bridge, replaced this, um, this outer ring, the inner ring. Uh, but when I tap it, I'm getting a rattle. I went in with a mirror, took a look at the brace that's uh, just behind the bridge pin holes. Uh, they seem okay. These seem to be solid here. Uh, but when I reach in and I feel for the the bridge plate and I tap it, I hear a little twacking, which means our bridge plate is loose. Let's see if we can't get a better bridge plate in there and butt it up against the brace that runs along here. If we're lucky, we'll see if we can't use a tool like this one, spring steel, very thin, and get in there and uh, get that bridge plate disadhered. Let's give it a go. All right. So, yeah, I'm able to get I'm able to wedge it underneath the the bridge plate. Okay, it's going to take a while. Yeah, look what I found in my boxes and boxes of weird stuff. It's a, uh, a heating element, an electric heating element. And I think that's just what I need. So I can get that uh, on that bridge plate there. I might even take a damp paper towel in between that and the and the bridge plate. Let's see. Oh, that's a perfect size and everything. If I took something like this, went in here, so you can see, went in here like that, I could butt this up against the end of it, up against the brace there, and clamp it here, and that would hold this thing into place. Need a little notch here. There's a, a bump here. So I said, uh, nothing fancy. Hold it so it's nice and nice and flush. Okay, I'm gonna put a wet paper towel on there. Okay, here we go with our rig. Get this thing out of the way. Oh, see, that's you know, eh. all right. Different tape. I know you go in there, you did it. There we go. There. There. Set that aside for a moment. Put this on here. Okay. Paper towel on there. We got our stay. Stay. Stay there. Okay. Take two with a different clamp. Put that there. Go to the 
there. And it's pushed all the way to the brace. All right, I think we're good to go. We don't, we don't need too much pressure. I don't want to squish anything. It's firm, enough to hold it in place. Okay, we got it in position, got it pl plugged in. And hopefully we won't set the thing on fire. <laughs> that would be a big problem. Well, it's designed, that's what it's designed for. It's beautiful out here. Not a guitar anywhere in sight. And we'll cast our line in, see what we get. Oh, beautiful. Oh, I got something. Whoa. Oh, man, it's huge. Okay. Unplug it. It's been about three minutes. what we got here a little bit there okay. okay we're in I can see the I can see my uh, spatula on Oh yeah. I think we got it. There you go. It worked. Okay. I've made my mark. Here and here. I'll line those up. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And we're gonna go all the way back to the brace this time. Yeah. Okay. There you go.
Okay, more hidden problems. <clears throat> um, all right, I just put the neck on the heating bar to straighten it out, but um, it didn't really work the first time around. Um, what it did do was uh, cause a separation of the fingerboard uh, that was probably already there, but really couldn't see. Uh, one indication of that is the crack in the fingerboard. Um, it was sort of a hidden problem until we heated it up and put some tension on it. And uh, we may have to just take the whole fingerboard off and start over and go from there. I also noticed that the fingerboard shrunk a little bit with that heat of fret here on the upper fingerboard and jumbo frets. Pretty, pretty crazy uh, for this uh, style of instrument. Ouch. More work. Let me get the light just right. Yeah, see that line? This backside is a veneer. Actually, we might save that. Set it aside. Okay, let's get some glue in here. It does line up better without the uh, veneer that was on there, which came apart. It's okay. Everything's repairable. Carbon graphite rods in here. Whoops. Here and here. I marked the uh, center line with center line of the bit. We'll be using these uh, posts because they correlate with the center of the uh, mounting threads there. So I just use that to. Put it up against the line, line it up with the line, hold it in place, and oh yes, we need to ensure that our headstock is not going to bump into our guide that runs along the edge of the fingerboard, so hold it where we want it until we bump into this where the curve starts on the fingerboard and double stick tape. Good. 
Now we got a cutting bit. It's not the exact width, but it doesn't need to be because the epoxy that we use to put the graphite rods in will make it all very solid. Okay, this is our carbon rod. I'm just going to set this up so it's just ever so slightly deeper than the rod. I find it. I'm going to set this to a fairly high speed according to Mr. Gorilla Guitar Repair over there. <laughs> Good job! Hey, there he is. The man, the myth, the legend. We work together. All right. So, when it comes time to repair this uh, missing solid pearl uh, tuner knob, what we found, we happen to have hanging around the shop, is this old butter knife. And my friend uh, John here is a machinist and he has uh, probably better uh, drills and uh, that'll be capable. Basically, this is like glass, you know? And um, very pretty. It seems a shame to cut into it, but we have two of them. Uh, and this comes very close to the shape and size that I need to uh, to replace uh, the knob. So we're going to give that a shot. These are rubber bands, and uh, 
cumulatively, they put a tremendous amount of pressure on here. And I've got glue squeezed out. And it also helps keep everything aligned. A little hard to get pressure in the heel area. So I just added a clamp. There we go. Okay, let's see how we did here. Okay, we got, uh, I think, something about like that. It's a fairly hefty cleat, but this got, there's a lot of tension there, and uh, we need we need a uh, little extra <clears throat> surface area there to uh, eradicate that. So uh, we'll go with that. Now I really want to make sure that this uh, cleat is aligned perfectly, so <clears throat> I'll use uh, magnets in this case to ensure that everything you know is aligned just where i want it and you know perpendicular to the crack there um my the problem is is that this thing is very thin and those braces inside are very tall and very sharp <laughs> um there's no way i'm getting my arm in there um so uh, we need to devise a way to retrieve those magnets after we are, they have done their job. And that uh, that's going to be uh, a challenge. We'll have to um, buy some sort of string or strap or something I can pull on and, and uh, retrieve these. All right, so let's figure that out. Since it's easier uh, I mean, to get the string in this way than to do it through the sound hole, because um, um, you just can't get in there, reach in there, and poke this through, through the other side, because I can't get inside there. So I'm going to cut off the uh, cut off the ball end and solder it, and solder that ball on. Um, and I uh, hope that it holds. I'll probably uh, make a little coil on the string or something so that the solder has something to grab onto and it just doesn't slip through the solder when we tighten it up. Because I'm going to have to, you know, put a little tension, a few pounds of pressure on there to get that to line up. On one side, I think I think we only need magnets on one side. Thank you. 
Do it. This is a dry run, by the way. Always do a dry run. Put this through here. We're there. And, uh, okay. And right gets over there. So I think uh I get more car. A rig to be right around there. I can see that it's aligned. Okay, I put a, a piece of wire wrapped around the ball end there, so I have a means in which to retrieve it once the glue dries. Just going to solder it on there a little bit. Okay. There we go. Okay, with any luck, this tape is strong enough to uh, help us retrieve our magnet. And I'm going to try to get in there as close to it as I can. successful. Okay, at some point there used to be <coughs> on focus. Yeah, uh, a little wedge in here, a little spacer. You can see where the notch is here and here. There's, there's a, because this fingerboard suspends above the top. It's not glued to the top. It sort of just floats above it, and there's a little uh, things that had fallen out over the years that used to be here and here, so we're going to make those little triangle pieces and put those back in there.